The news with Gina Grad. There's your hotsy totsy. Oh, we're looking at her. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she's real. You kind remember? Of, kind of seventies hot. Yeah, there was <laughs> there was. Um, she in in every sitcom has a Gunther, right? Like oh yeah, right. Like in Friends, <laughs> like he's there. He's just always there. It wouldn't make sense to have a different person in class no. or at oh. the Central Park. He's in the orbit. You have to have the same people right. in the same class, right. but cheers they can't the, talk. Yeah, cheers to the same guys in the yeah, bar. Right. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, starting with a little news, David Ortiz, the former Boston Red Sox star known as Big Poppy, was shot at a club Sunday in the Dominican Republic, but is reportedly doing fine after undergoing surgery. Uh, the Red Sox say Ortiz, quote, sustained a gunshot wound to the lower back abdominal region. We do have video of it. Uh, he's recovering after surgery. And I'll just kind of have that on a loop while I'm talking. Uh, he was reportedly shot from behind while he sat at the bar. Doctors reportedly had to remove part of his intestines, his mm. colon, and and gallbladder. The former Boston slugger was shot by a man at close range just before 9 p.m. Uh, local time. The suspected gunman was caught by the crowd and beaten, and police plan to question him after he finishes up his medical treatment. I don't I don't get shooting people from behind like who you don't know or anything. Like It's such a weird impulse. Like, I'm going to run into this place, mm. I'm going to shoot this guy, and then I'm going to run out of here. Like, see trying to rob him is he trying to assassinate him like what's he trying to do what's the what's the end game i mean he can be nutty or high or anything else but it's just a weird is there a world where this is like a gang initiation kind of thing you know what i mean like shoot somebody's like shit i'll shoot a big poppy it could be anything's possible i mean the guy is in his himself is in intensive care so we'll find Mm. out more from him later i know uh he's like an icon over there and stuff but i I just go somewhere somewhere miami and call the life like i don't know about how much dominican time i'd be spending but also i don't i like i know that guy i know everyone loves him because he does he kisses his finger and then like points up at the at the ceiling and everything he's big and big and lovable yeah Yeah. oh it's actually uh when they do when keenan does him on snl it always makes me laugh he's dj Khaled with pop yeah. <laughs> the pop mm-hmm. and sweat. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we wish him well. Yeah. Uh, the bad news just keeps it coming at Santa Anita, man. Three more horses died at That's Santa crazy. Anita. I know. Over the past five days. But despite this, the racetrack outside of L.A. says it will remain open. Two horses were euthanized after sustaining injuries on the track. A third had a heart attack. Who are the owners who are letting their horses well, run on this track? That's the question. I mean, you'd think they would pull all of their animals, but it brings the total to 29 since December. An investigation into the high number of deaths has still not reached a conclusion. Barely more than five months. And the California Horse Racing Board advised Santa Anita officials to suspend racing, but management says, quote, the future of California racing is best served by continuing to race. So like Brian said, that, that begs the question, who is letting their animals? And we'll race there. If, if this were, if these, if we were racing dogs, we would have stopped by now, right? We'd burn it, to the ground. It's, it's no. weird. Like uh, we, we love horses, <laughs> but if these were dogs, if there's just twenty five dogs had died, oh, people would take to the streets. They take to the streets, yeah. right? Yourself to the yeah, right? The it's, gates. It's weird. I don't. Uh, First, here's my world. My world is, I don't know why we don't have dog racing or ostrich racing or, or anything else. <laughs> but on the other hand, I. I know it's a business. Everything's a business. Like, air travel's a business, except for when they find a glitch in the Airbus 7 whatever, they ground them and, right. like, tell they Figure fix them. And you go, hey, man, there's thousands of units of these airplanes all over the world, and some 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 airlines just, this is their whole mm-hmm. stat. That's all they have is these 780s or these seven thirty sevens or Airbus, whatever. They're having some glitches and yep. a couple of crashes. Yep. It's like, I know. But it's a safety thing, and we're pulling the plug. And they're, like, they're going to lose millions of dollars. Like, yes, they are. But no more people are going to die in plane crashes for yeah. now. So that's the trade. That's what we do. So somewhere around the twenty third horse, you got to go. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah. We're just going to pull the plug, and then we're going to figure it out, and then we'll come back. That's yeah. what we'll. That's what we'll do. And I don't know. Uh, I mean, I imagine from a car racing standpoint, you might have some insight that I certainly don't have. I don't know from a horse racing in, insight. Is there are there races being run that are they're trying to qualify for something bigger? So like they can't afford to miss the race. You know mm. what I mean? It's not. They're not just doing it for fun. They're trying to yeah. qualify for something else. I'm sure that that's an element. But whatever it is, <clears throat> at a certain point. Somebody has to just 
put some red mm-hmm. tape in yep. front of the turnstile and go, we're not we'll opened anymore yeah. until we can figure this out. Yeah, and they're not doing that. Speaking of exotic animal racing, you know what's fun, which you wouldn't think would be fun? Turtle racing. Oh, don't point at the turtles <laughs> That's right. in don't, Venice. Can't point. There's a place in Venice that does turtle racing. <laughs> I've been there they, they, they put them in a big, uh, maybe <clears> like <throat> 10 feet, maybe a little more across, a big circle, right? Like a big. You're in, you're in a mini arena. Yeah, a big, a big circle, like 12 feet across. And they put all the turtles on, under like a, uh, a bucket, and then they lift the bucket, and whichever turtle gets to the outside first, that's the winner. It mm-hmm. can take like two or three minutes. It's great. Yeah, and you I can't can point at them, or, or the turtles disqualify. There'd have to be so booze. Oh, oh there's right. a bar <laughs> called yeah. the back of a bar. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've done this, Adam, where they date, but they purposely pick super hot girls out of the audience to take the turtles and bend over to put them down. And then when they put the turtles down the middle, they go, oh, she did it wrong. She has to do it again. And then they'd have to pick up. The, it, it's good it clean crazy. Fun. It's good clean fun. <laughs> so stupid. They used to have dog racing in Kansas City. We had the Woodlands. We would go for my birthday. I We don't. It must not be legal wow. in California, <laughs> but I don't know why. If you're having it's horse greyhounds. racing, I don't. I don't yeah. But then again, we have like poker and gardena California and, craps and like you can't play the house mm-hmm. you have yeah. to play each other we have a bunch of stupid rules involving gambling that are, seem archaic and weird mm-hmm. and, and, and it's gonna be the rules with gambling and or horse racing or dog racing or whatever are going to be looked at like two drinking fountains mm-hmm. or pot being illegal or gay sex being illegal like our, 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 our kids and their kids are just going to look back going what the fuck Why? are you guys doing no no now listen if you lived in LA you could drive to Las Vegas and then you could time. play 21 all you wanted now back in the day grandpa who lived in LA he could go to a gambling barge that would be in international <laughs> waters right. that would be 26 miles out in international waters he could gamble and then just take a boat take a skiff back here or like I said you could drive to Vegas, but no, you could play pan poker in Gardena, but that that's not is that Texas Hold'em. They're gonna go, you fucking nuts! Are you nuts? Yeah. What the fuck does it? Well, no, they have river boats. They're not in a river. They just dig a yeah. moat and they fill it up with a hose and they put the boat on down. the thing and then that's oh no, that's an Indian casino. See, it, they were. They have Indians that we throw them off the land, but that they built a casino on the land that's not our land, so they get to do what they, they want. Slots. What's going on? Oh, the lottery. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Anyone can play the lottery. Yes, it's the worst form of gambling. Yes, yes. But dog Encourage racing it. is a totally different yeah. situation. You just look at gam just look at gambling mm. in California and go, What the fuck? What are we thinking? Well, who's making these rules? What what's happening? No. Then you dip your toe into the sports gambling. No, I can't do it. You can do it online. You can do it in Atlantic City. You can do it in Las Vegas. Can't, you can do it offshore. Right. right. Oh, so God. the reality is, if you want to gamble, you'll be able to gamble just like if you're gay and you want to have sex. You have sex. <laughs> right. or you're black. You want to use your own drinking fountain. <laughs> Fine. Or another. Wait, Doesn't matter because nobody cares because as soon as you get a year away from this, you go, oh, who cares? Right. We, I, just think about what we do, all that we impose on ourselves on just – just take Californian gambling, just just enough. I, I was I was I was walking around with uh, Sonny last night, and I was like, um, "Oh, we're we're bringing back crank yankers," and he's like, "Oh, okay." And then sounds fun. And then I said, <laughs> "Yeah, we used to have to go to Vegas, and make all the mm-hmm. phone calls," and he'd be like. Oh, you have to make all the phone calls from Vegas. You go to Vegas and call California. It's like, no, you couldn't call from California or to California. You had to go to Vegas and call New York or Alaska, oh, sure number or of places states. that yeah. were that were okay to call. And it's like oh. a- again, just more weird state by state rules. Sorry, every no uh, uh, to that point. Every time you go into a winery or, or, or someplace to buy wine, it's like here are the states we can ship to, and it's like half right. the country sh- shaded in. Well, or you have to be a member of the bar. Mm. Uh. Even to, to have a drink. I went to New York. Uh, I was probably doing Stern or something. I did my usual thing where I landed at like midnight. And I was being driven to the hotel, and I was like, "Oh, I want a little. I want some red wine before I go to bed." So I told the driver, "Like, stop at a liquor store, and I'm going to get a bottle of red wine." And you guys know where this is going. And he stopped at a liquor store or what they call a market or whatever. And I went in. And it was like rack of weird wine. And I was like, well, okay, 13 bucks or something. I bought a thing of red wine. I got home. I got to the hotel. I poured it in the glass. I tasted it. I was like, what the fuck is this? And then it's like not a wine product, distilled something, <laughs> something. And I'm like, why don't you just sell two buck chuck? And yeah. it's like, oh, no, that, that's not a wine store. 
you got to go to a wine store in New York City, in Manhattan. You don't, uh-huh. you can't go to a liquor store or market. You can't, you can't go to Whole Foods and buy wine. You have to go to a, a wine, wine shop, store, man. and there's no wine shop open at midnight, so you can't get a bottle of red wine. You have to get this weird bottle of sort of Pruno. It like had some alcohol in it, but also like red dye number, whatever, and sulfites and like junk. It was just junky. This was hobo booze wine that you would they would sell. Also, they never stop you. They never go like, I hope you're Just not so you know. thinking that's here? wine. It's not wine. It was weird. That's bizarre. But they have their own set of rules in Manhattan, which is you do not go to Whole Foods and come back with a bottle of wine. You have to go to a liquor, no. a, a wine store and buy a bottle of wine. Well, that is where we shine because Whole Foods has a wine bar. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Nice wine. Yeah. Also, you don't realize... Like when I was there doing Celebrity Apprentice, if you if you got that routine of I have a couple glasses of red wine at the end of the night, and the, you ain't getting it at the supermarket, and the wine store closes at like nine, like you don't Why realize do you start feeling like a junkie. Like you're like I gotta call ahead and make sure that place is open. I'm like where's the local? You gotta go find it. It's not everywhere. Wow. Yeah, they're mobbed up or something. I don't know, Max. Pat, you can find out what the yeah wine and spirits. So you can only get them at. Like liquor stores, but convenience stores won't have them. Markets, convenience stores, right. 7 yeah. Elevens. They'll have stuff. beer, but they won't have wine or spirits. Of course, because yeah. it only makes sense. Yeah, there's a logical rule. <laughs> I know it's What's war. It's like, what do we do? Why? Yeah, can't buy it on Sunday in Kansas. Got to go to Missouri. Oh, yeah. When I was. Got to go to State Line. That was so. It's so weird where you come from, where you come from. When I went to Road Atlanta the first time, I was like getting a six pack for the track, and we just rolled in on Sunday. And I just told the guy, but I went to the cooler. It's all caged off, and I'm like, mm-hmm. gang bangers, <laughs> stealing the beer. <laughs> I'm like, hey, glad they got problems out here too. And I just went to the counter, and I was like, hey, I need you to open that up for me. I'm I'm kind of in a hurry, and he's like, we're not opening that up for you. I'm, like, I'm not a gang banger. Open it up. And he's I like, no, it's are. Sunday. You know? <laughs> Can't go to the racetrack and gotcha. nope. bring your bring your beer. It'd just be when I'll tell you who I would vote for. Oh, I would I vote for restaurant. anybody who said we're just going to straighten all this shit out. Mm-hmm. The age we'll of consent online. is everyone, not going to yeah. be different in Hawaii than it is in Kentucky. We're just going to pick a number. It's going to be eleven. <laughs> but we're going to just pick a number. We're just going to do. It. You can sell beer on Sundays. You can sell wine. It'll be. It'll be. Look, it'll anywhere. be at the market or it won't be at the market. But it won't be. Yeah. Different wherever you go. Yes, you'll be able to ship yeah. everywhere where people drink wine. It's the same. Oh, it's all right. It's in, it's insane. It's, in, it's insane because it's all self imposed. Yeah. That's the part that's weird to yeah. me. Why are we doing it to us? Why don't we just straighten it out? Most of it's just archaic anyway. Like not open on Sunday. Right. Like that's the Lord's day. Okay, let's just figure it all out. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, here's a name of someone I imagine makes an appearance in the Mr. Skin book. I, I would just assume Sigourney Weaver. Oh, yeah, many times. Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, she has confirmed Classic. that she will reprise her role as Dana Barrett in the next Ghostbusters movie. She is 69 now, and she says she's joining co-stars Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd in the Jason Reitman-directed Ghostbusters 3. That will come out in the summer uh, next year. Mm. Mm. They had the chick Ghostbuster, right? Yeah, nope. that's what they called it, Chico's. Not a good movie. Not good? No. By, by the way, Adam, she did the greatest nude while riding a stationary bike scene in movie history in Half Moon Street in 1985. Sigourney Weaver. Find it. Yeah, really? Now, it's no Peloton bike, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's those terrible 80s uh, bikes, you know, is it stationary. The one that, that, Pretty the, much, the yeah. Handlebars that's nice. t- horrible. But it is the greatest uh, celebrity nude on a stationary bike scene. Hmm. That's I'm trying good. to think of that movie. I don't even Half remember movie. that. Yeah, you wouldn't. You would Jason Reitman's dad directed Ghostbusters? Ivan Reitman. Oh, he right? must have. I'm I'm the original. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I think he's pretty sure Ivan did, yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of celebrity nudes, hundreds of items belonging to the late Hollywood icon Burt Reynolds, including belt buckles, boots, his famed Trans Am. They're all hitting the auction block this weekend in Beverly Hills and online at juliansauction.com. More than 870 items from the actor's career will be sold. Uh, costumes, props, scripts, clothing, portraits of Lonnie Anderson and a 1979 Trans Am he had restored to look just like the car he drove in Smokey and the Bandit. Don't do the auction will take place Saturday and Sunday. Some of the stuff is for as little as 25 bucks. You can also purchase some shots from his famous 1972 nude photo shoot for Cosmopolitan. 
It's tough because this stuff only really goes up like 15 or 20 years after everyone dies. Mm. So there's this thing of like you want to cash out because he died, but you're leaving so much money on the table. I mean, imagine what you could have got a Jimi Hendrix guitar for uh, six months after Jimi Hendrix I, died. Uh, the difference would be 1500 bucks versus $2.7 million. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's insane. There had to be so many people, Steve McQueen or Jimi Hendrix or whomever, whomever John Lennon, who mm-hmm. just cashed in stuff like the year after right. or mm-hmm. a couple years after, and that stuff's all astronomical now. I don't know that Bird will hit those heights, but his stuff would definitely be worth... It's not worth that much right now. That's the way we roll. You think about all those... Think about um, Freddie Mercury Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It takes 20 years of of death, 15 years of death or whatever it is, before we're doing a movie about Carol Shelby now, you know, from the 60s. Here's here's my thought on that. You mentioned Jimi Hendrix. You mentioned John Lennon. You mentioned Freddie Mercury. Mm -hmm. All those guys died young, and once their fans became of earning age, they could spend a shitload of money on memorabilia. Burt Reynolds died very old. I don't think he matters that much to people who are under the age of 65, 70, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if his stuff's going up. Like, Burt Reynolds, well, he's also maybe not on the caliber of those guys, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I think his, yeah. his fans are not of that prime, you know, I got money, I got to spend it, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah that's but- my thought. It'll it'll be more twenty years from now, but I don't know if it'll be significant. But either way, it's it'll be sort of sad when his cowboy boots get uh, thirty eight bucks or something, and they hold, they retail for forty four. Like it's 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 sad. Are they going to sell his rugs? Oh, not throw oh, rugs. No, oh, hair pieces. That's a very good question. They were not mentioned buy, specifically. I would piece? buy a hair piece, oh. and I would definitely wear that. Oh wow! And I would answer any any and all questions that came along with wearing that. But the, like the Trans Am is his Trans Am that he had rebuilt. Yeah, not he wanted the to one look from like the, the car. whatever. It's yeah. just it's not going to fetch that much. Lonnie Anderson, she ever stroker ace. Uh, she was in her underwear, but never did a nude scene. Never did. What? That's, yeah, don't get mad at me. I'm just <laughs> not hard to believe. It's not hard to no, believe. actually, it's a scene with Burt Reynolds where she's passed out on the bed and she's in bra and panties, and he's debating whether he should. You know, this Some was the this dilemma. was the eighties yeah. when it was a debate whether you should have sex sure. with someone who's passed out. And he's walking around the bed, and then he decides not to. But she is in her underwear. So if you knew her from WKRP, it's an exciting thing go. to see. But it's not nudity. Yeah, I think she seemed like she made it her whole career without that. Mm-hmm. Um, Stroke so Race was so another far. one of those. I don't know. Do you think Hal Needham directed Stroke <laughs> Race? Because uh, they had this, all these movies that Burt Reynolds were in. They were like loosely well, remember, scripted uh, car they, movies. I became a big Adrian Barbeau fan from those Burt Reynolds movies, those Cannonball movies. You remember? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The sure. Cleavage. Oh, oh man, was she suits. sexy. Mr. Skid has no interest in what goes on behind the camera. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Hal Needham, Hal Needham did direct Stroke Race. Hal Needham was a stunt coordinator and he just somehow went like if you're setting up all the shots and doing all the stunt coordinating and ever and this is one big long car chase right. anyway with a bar fight in between why don't you just direct the whole fucking thing because that's all those things ended up being and if you have guys like burt reynolds and dom deloise and guys that are pretty good at improvising <laughs> right, yeah. and stuff, you don't really need much of a script no, a- no. anyway and you just go fuck it yep and by the way, there's nothing else on. <laughs> like, Watching it regardless. Like you go home and uh, watch um, you know, Game of Thrones. Right. There's nope. no competition. No. Nope. Nope. What else, Gina Graham? Well, Britney Spears is taking on the paparazzi uh, in a conspiracy, she says, there is to make her look bad. Literally. Britney was responding to photos of her taking over the weekend on the beach with her boyfriend, Sam Ashgari. Uh, she shared a video on Instagram. Now, that's do we have the picture, too? Uh, I think scroll down. Uh, there's a picture of her. Britney Spears still a thing? I she, she's well. Lately, she's a thing because I she's know. been talked about with her conservatorship and her her mental health. Sure. Um, so that's the video. I'm um, sorry. That was the picture that was posted where she thought she was looking a little bit thick, and mm-hmm. so she got on Instagram and had this floated this theory to the people. Mm-hmm. Hello, and please don't judge me. I look haggard right now. But my question to all of you is. A lot of fans in our world today, they always are subject to really criticize people and say that the pictures and videos that they're posting are either not on time or they're fake. But no one ever really asks, are the paparazzi pictures fake and do the paparazzi people do stuff to the pictures and is the news really real? 
It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. Yesterday I went swimming. I look like I'm 40 pounds bigger than I am today. This is how I am right now, and I'm skinny as a needle. You tell me, what is real? Needle, bad choice. Yeah. Mm. Skinny as a needle. <laughs> Her so, voice sounds pressured and sort of young girlish. Arrested. There's something going on. I never really hear her talk, but um, what's going on? So, Well, the photo agency that released the photo, of course, denies that they've done anything to the picture. They said, we think Britney looks great, and it's ludicrous to suggest the photos or video were altered in any way. They were not. Now... I know, I'm sure everyone can relate to this, but especially women, I can take two pictures in the same day and I get tons of responses being like, oh my God, Gina, you look great, keep going. And then the other picture's like, oh, Gina, are you okay? I mean, it just, it it's angles, it's it's clothes, it's whatever. Yes. I don't think anything looks doctored about that picture. No, I, I don't. I don't think it looks doctored. And if you just hit the wrong angle, the wrong shadow, the wrong whatever, it can look that way. But also, on the other hand, I, I don't know. I feel like somebody... She's been trading on her appearance for her entire career. Yeah, I mean, it's Mickey she was Mouse Club. getting into a little schoolgirl's outfit yeah. and mincing about and everything. And I, I, you know, there's a part of me that's kind of like, well, you're not supposed to when you're 16 or 17 try to give a bunch of 30 year old dudes a boner. But that's how you that's how you got rich. Mm. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just the chickens are coming home to roost or or something, <laughs> and we shouldn't care. But you. <laughs> You made us care. I was going to say. You, you, you drew us right. into your tent. You didn't, you weren't a scholar. You were bopping around <laughs> exploiting your sexuality, and you've had a pretty damn good 20 something year run, yeah. but the thing eventually coasts to a stop, and we're getting to that point. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the, uh, the nude bodysuit with the giant cobra? Yeah. That I was mean, something. everything she, I mean, if you. If you took Britney Spears and you just sort of removed the sexual component mm. and you just went, all right, take someone, I don't know, like Sia or some mm. other pop act that doesn't trade on the physicality, where would she be? Like, wh yeah. wh where's the music? Where's the art? Like, where are the songs? I, I never thought it was that good. It was that she was singing yeah. it, I think, well, that did it all. Yeah. I mean, then again, 16-year-old girls aren't making those decisions for themselves. Mm -hmm. There's a whole team of dudes at Capitol Records or wherever doing it for her. Yeah. She's got that little voice, which yeah. always means well, trouble. She's a you vocal also, fry. You also posit like, oh, you, anyone who got the, you know, the Danny Bonaduce's of the world and who got that kind of money or fame early on was, you know, you, you see what happens to you if you get that kind of money and fame. She was a sex symbol at, what, 17 or 18? Like, yeah. that, that, that's going to yeah. screw someone up. So yes. she, so she had a 45-year-old dude stalking her. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, yeah. restraining orders it, and whatnot. It, sure. Look, the good news is everyone is miserable. <laughs> That's the good news. <laughs> we can all take comfort news. in that. <laughs> yes. Uh, how many more you want? Two more. Okay, you got it. Uh, so fantasizing about murdering a boss or supervisor is more common than you think and totally healthy, apparently, according to a criminal psychologist and the independent. I like when you're putting this report together <laughs> and they're like, is it healthy, Steve? It, it's totally healthy. <laughs> we can't just write it's healthy. No, no, that's not healthy enough. So it's 100%. you do understand we're talking about killing a, an employer, right? A fantasy, <laughs> you know, a, a dream come true. Right. right. Well, I'm not saying <laughs> it's case scenario. I'm not making the argument for not writing the report. I'm just using the word totally in front of healthy. You'd rather have absolutely? Yeah. Without question? Completely? I think there's a sentence where you write it's healthy. <laughs> we, we don't not, need to modify it. With I don't totally. Think, I don't think that. That captures the joy we all feel when we fantasize, Look, dream. I, I know I'm all your supervisors, so maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting a little overly defensive about the word totally. But what I'm saying is that totally is a little bit of a call to action. Healthy. See, here's what I'm saying. How about perfectly? Perfectly normal. Mm. Mm. I think we could still go with normal mm. or even healthy. I mean, one. Good. So here's how the sentence would lay out: one having fantasies mm. about killing a boss or supervisor mm. is healthy, right, oh. or normal. But when we say totally, right, without question, we're almost saying if you're, you'd be a fool not to engage in this behavior. <laughs> Once again, I am your supervisor, right. so maybe I'm coming from well, a protest. Let's read one. the first draft. Having sweet, sweet dreams about <laughs> killing your boss is not only healthy, but encouraged. Yeah, I, I agree. That was too much. Yeah, maybe just one sweet. <laughs>
Yeah. So apparently more than half of people have at one time or another imagined killing a person they know. And uh, the criminal psychologist here said that fantasizing about the details of killing a boss isn't entirely a negative thing. Is that better? As murder fantasies can be an exercise in empathy. Bet you didn't see that coming. She says, you think things through. You imagine what the consequences would be like. You imagine what it would be like to actually go through with it. And then, of course, you decide against it. She goes on to say that fantasies and empathy exercises are critical to making good decisions, particularly in situations where you don't have much time. While things are pretty good, that's the time to do the empathy exercises. So I've had fantasies about people just dying, you know, <laughs> so they can just leave me alone. Right. But I don't have thoughts about killing a them. Murder. Yeah, I wonder if there's a big difference. I never think, oh, I'm going to, who has, mur- does anyone ever have these fantasies? That seems weird to me. I've had the, like, go away and never come back and never bother me mm-hmm. anymore, right. like a lot of program directors and stuff <laughs> like that, but I've never. You don't march into their office with a cleaver. Yeah, I don't have fantasies no. about taking them out. It seems fantastical yeah. or something. Yeah, a big effort. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I imagine it's for, this is geared toward people who work in offices and cubicles and feel like there's something someone constantly breathing down their neck at all times for nine hours a day. I, I don't know exactly who it's geared toward, but that would be my guess. That's weird. Micromanagers. That's weird to me. Yeah. Yeah. And when I used to work construction, I had like super asshole foreman sure. guys and your fantasies that they just fall off a ladder and oh, don't, don't yeah. come back. The fantasies, they would be dead, not that you would kill yeah. them. Yeah. What's cathartic know. about that, Brian? Yeah. Being I don't relieved know. of. Yeah, that yeah. they just weren't there like, yeah. or even never born somehow. Yeah. It was weird. I, I, when I was thinking about program directors and when I used to do radio, I thought, man, you know they're bad because the fant like when people sit around and go like, oh, I got a really good program director. <laughs> He leaves me alone. Man. He doesn't say <laughs> nothing to me. Like, that guy doesn't even call me into his office and go, oh, yeah? Yeah, I had a good program director when I was in Indiana. That guy never said a word of it. I didn't even know like, his first name. The bar's so low for the <laughs> program director. No one ever says, oh, this guy had killer ideas. Yeah, great collaborator. And a lot of great suggestions that made the product better. It was like the highest you could get is left alone. He came yeah. in two days a week. Yeah. What if we did that with gardeners and roofers? Like, this, uh, Ormondo never showed up. That guy was awesome gardener, man. He just never came. I never saw his pickup truck. Oh. Like, it's a weird thing. Yeah, but it's not great. It's a statement. It's a statement as to how bad most program yeah. directors are, right? How, how low the bar is. Yeah, how low <laughs> the bar is. Physically being left alone is the best program being director I've ever the best. had. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Sorry. Well, uh, finally, a name that I imagine also has appeared in Mr. Skin, though I can't think of any off the top of my head. Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, yeah. Shakespeare in Love. She won Come on. Yeah. I saw her puppies. Of course. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. What? What movie? Shakespeare, Shakespeare in Love. Best picture uh, Oh, yeah. No, I know that. I thought, what'd you oh, say? Oh, no. The, the, the quote is, uh, is I saw her puppies. Because mm. remember, she's hiding as a guy. She's pretending mm-hmm. to be a guy. And, so yeah. grab that yeah. drop. Grab that drop. Right. So she's like defending movie. her marriage. That is a good movie. It is. Uh, she's defending her marriage against, uh, about, Basically, she has an uncommon uh, living arrangement. This was worded badly. Uh, she and her new husband, Brad Falchuk, own two nearby houses, and they only stay together four nights a week. The other three he spends in his other house with his two children from a previous marriage. And in defending the setup, she told the London Sunday Times, quote, all my married friends say the way we live sounds ideal and we shouldn't change a thing. She and Falchuk married in September. She remains close to her ex-husband, Coldplay singer Chris Martin, and his current girlfriend, actress Dakota Johnson, which I am sure is on Mr. Skin. Oh, yeah. All um, over. They're just a big, big old happy family. They vacation together, the whole clan. I haven't talked about this in a kajillion years or maybe even ever, but I used to talk about having this theory that every relationship had a number on it. Like, they they do it with jet engines, where they don't go, how many miles does it travel? They go, how many hours does it run? And then we have to take it out and rebuild it. Mm-hmm. Like, it has X amount of hours. And if you think about any relationship you've ever had of any kind, you could assign a number to it, a number of hours. Oh. Like, a, a relationship you had with a principal, a school teacher, a, a playmate, someone in your grade in the sixth grade that you don't see anymore, whatever you go, I, I was friends with that guy for... <laughs> 2,600 hours, and now it's, now it's, now it's gone. It's Rod's course. Any ex-girlfriend or boyfriend, mm-hmm. like anything past what you're in right now, you could go, well, that had a finite number yeah. of hours. Any job, any interaction almost, you could go, this is my number 
with that. So if the one you're in now has a number, why use them all up? <laughs> why not spread them out a little bit? You know what I mean? Interesting. Like if I said, Brian, uh, mm. in your life, you will be able to see 128 more movies. Would you go 128 days in a row? No, I'm, I'm pick and choose. Spread it out over. Do one, yep. one every three weeks. Right. Spread it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Gwyneth is not using every day up. She's not using all her hours up. Smart. That's right. She's spreading them out. She sure is. She's going six, seven hours on, mm -hmm. and she's taking 48 off. Then she's going six. <laughs> Meanwhile, two weeks went by. Chumps. She's used up 10 hours. Yeah. She might be a genius. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's a genius yeah. because she knows there's a certain amount of numbers to every relationship. But that is an interesting, I mean, we talk about the Bradys, we talk about all this stuff. Of course, blended families, that's the new normal. That's the modern family. But no, his kids live in one house, her kids live in one house, and they kind of go do their separate thing. If you, I, the, I've I said a million times, like I said, you know, uh, give me your relationship advice, Ace, eh? like two TiVos and some square footage. <laughs> like if you can spread it out. <laughs> Look, what do what do people biggest arguments couples have over money mm -hmm. and finances? Yep. So if you have money, you immediately take your foot off that mm -hmm. accelerator, like that nutty stuff. Like I sitting in my office and uh, my kid's birthday was over the weekend and over the weekend on Sunday a 50 foot stretch limo just pulls in front of my house and I'm like holy shit what, where's that Who, oh all the girls are going oh. to Santa Monica and a limo they got a limo and I was like Started to look at it, and I was like, holy <laughs> shit, what's that costing me? And then I went, oh, fuck it. Mm -hmm. And and I Pick just went bottles. back and watched TV. Like Now, if I was swinging a hammer, and that limo pulled in front, and I was making what I was making back Turn in the day, that would have turned into something big. Yep. <laughs> Real big. And if you get some square footage, you get some money, you get out of each other's face. Mm -hmm. Like when you're living in that small apartment, I mean, I've lived with girlfriends and singles where they didn't even have a bedroom, it's like just much one money. room and the thing. And you're, oh, you're constantly stepping over the, you, one person tries to take a nap. The other person goes into the kitchen to make toast or something. It's like, come on with the toaster oven. I can hear it from here. Like it, it's a big <laughs> argument on everything. These guys are smart. Yeah. Spread it out. Spread it out. It'll well go forever. And again, you think you don't have a number. You get to the end of your life, you could assign a number to every interaction you've had. I don't care if it's glancing. I don't care if it's a bartender in a city you've never been into. That's good for 14 minutes, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> every human being you've ever met, you put a number to. And again, you go, well, what's the number to the relationship I'm in now? Oh, we'll find yeah. out. Just like we could find the other numbers sure. of the exes that you from your high school well, sweetheart. It seems had, so obvious now. Had a number. Yeah. Your roommates and you, <laughs> that, you had a number to how long that person and you were going to be a roommate. She's just not spending it all in one place. She's Smart. just smarter than us. Shrewd. Dole it out. Well, or richer. It, also, definitely that. Right. All right, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Go, oh, Gina, are you okay? Gina, Gina, Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad.